Here's how to install an air horn kit on your car. The kit that I'm using is your standard consumer grade kit that you can get from many auto parts stores. It comes with two horns, a relay, some tubing, the compressor and some hardware. So the way the air horn works is they give you this relay which you wire from a switch in the cabin to give you 12 volts at the compressor here. That then sends compressed air out to the two air horns via this splitter. Some of the other things you might need for the install are a fuse and fuse holder, some eyelets to go around the battery, some spade connectors, of course a switch to go on the dashboard, as well as lots of lots of wire. I'm using 16 gauge. Now the way these air horns mount is they've got a little bolt that goes in here and then you can attach your bracket and then a nut on the other end. And then on this end you can screw it to the rad cradle. I'm going to be mounting my air horn in front of the radiator. To get a better access I'm going to need to remove the grill. Then remove the grill. I'm going to be using this pre-existing hole on the rad cradle as my mounting point. Now I'm going to be mounting my air horn kit inside of here. Now because this is cheap plastic I don't want any water going inside of there. So I'm going to be mounting this facing downward. Same thing with the motor. There's the electrical connections at the bottom here. So I'll also be mounting that facing downward. So to mount the air horns I got a piece of 1 8 inch bar stock. I've cut it to length and drilled some holes in it. This bolt here is going to bolt into my rad cradle down there. These two outer bolts will be for the air horns and the inner bolt here will be for the compressor. So I've got my hardware installed on my fabricated bracket. I'm going to go ahead and install that on the rad cradle using a quarter inch bolt, a washer, a nut. I'm going to go ahead and tighten down this bolt making sure the bracket is straight. Next I'm going to take my air compressor and install the holes. Then I can go ahead and mount the air compressor onto its mounting bolt. Next I'm going to take the holes and install it onto the air horn. Next I'm going to install the air horn onto the bracket. So here's what's going on. We've got the air horns installed on the bracket and the compressor which is loose for now until we finish the electrical. Now it's time to install the plumbing at the bottom here. I'm going to connect the Y connectors together. Make sure these are nice and tight. Then I'm going to connect the line from the air compressor to the Y connector. The next steps do the wiring. Just a quick overview on how the electrical works for the air horn. We've got the compressor here that powers the air horns. It takes power directly from the battery through a 30 amp fuse and then it goes to a relay. We've also got the horn switch which is inside the car that takes fuse power from the battery and goes to the relay and then it goes to the ground. I'm going to be mounting this relay under the passenger side headlight. I'm going to start with the battery, run the power source down to the compressor and then from the compressor out to a relay under the headlight and then from the headlight a wire into the cabin for the switch. So here we are in the fender liner. I ran a wire through the grommet that goes to the wires in the door out to the fender. So here we are inside under the glove box. This is where the wire comes through from the grommet. This wire I'm going to run to the dash to the switch. Here's the wire in the fender liner. So here on the passenger side I've got my wire that comes from the cabin. I've taken my corner light and my headlight out and I'm going to be using these spade connectors so that I can properly connect to these relays. That washer tank is made in April 1992 and this car is a 99. What the heck Toyota? To make a spade connection you strip the wire a little bit, insert it into the spade and then bring in your crimping tool and crimp it tight. And that's it. Then I'll use a little bit of heat shrink and cover this connector. I'm going to be mounting my relay on this bolt down here and I'll be using this ground connection to ground my relay. Now to install the eyelid on the ground wire you just strip the wire a little bit and insert it into the eyelet and then use a crimping tool and lightly crimp it. And don't cut it like what I did. And then apply a little bit of heat shrink. Now I can go ahead and mount these two eyelets onto this ground bolt right here. I'm going to go ahead and install these two eyelets and then reinstall the 10 millimeter bolt. This here is my long wire that I'm going to be using to attach the battery to the compressor. I've got a connector already on one end. On the other end I would like to wire an inline fuse and to do that I'm going to need to solder this together and put an eyelet on this end so that it can attach to the battery. This here is my inline fuse connector. I've got it connected to my power wire. I'm just going to add a little bit of solder here to make the connection secure. And then of course I'm going to heat shrink over the connection to make it nice and tight. Next we're going to connect the fuse end of the wire to the positive battery terminal. I'm just going to connect that and then replace the washer and the nut. Cool bell is going to ring. Obviously since you're now connected to power you want to leave your fuse out until you're done with all the wiring. So I ran the wire from the battery leaving my fuse up here where I can access it down the rad cradle here and then behind the horn down to the compressor at the bottom. Now for the ground wire to the compressor I'm starting from the compressor running it up the rad cradle across under the headlight to the relay. Now to connect my wires to the compressor I'm just going to pull up the compressor from the bracket connect the red wire that comes from the battery to the positive terminal and connect the black wire that goes to the relay on the switches to the negative terminal. Make sure they're nice and tight and then reinstall the compressor onto the bracket. These here are my four wires that I'm going to plug into my relay. I've got my red wire here which is from the switch inside the car. I've got a black wire here which is from the compressor. 
and I've got two ground wires which are attached to that ground point over there. Now if you look closely at the relay, you'll see the pins are numbered 87, 30, 86, and 85. So how the relay part works is you've got four pins, 86, 87, 85, and 30. These two opposing pins, 86 and 85, are the coil. When you hit the horn switch, it activates pins 87 and 30 which go to ground and turn on the air horn. Now since relays are not polarized, you can switch these around. So the coils in this relay run across 86 and 85, so I'm going to plug in the switch on 86 and a ground wire on 85 and then I'll plug in my motor on 87 and then another ground on 30. Now I can mount this relay on that ground bolt down there. So I'm just going to put the bolt in here and then run that back into the body of the car. Tighten down the relay and that's the relay installed nice and snug. This here is where I want to drill a hole and add the switch, so I'm just going to pop off this panel here. All I need is 12 volts to send to this wire under the hood to the relay. I'm going to be tapping into my cigarette lighter wiring and adding a switch between this relay and the positive wire. So to attach this wire together, I'm going to be using a splice connector. So this here is the switch that I'm going to be using. It's a regular push button switch. The two outside terminals are normally open, so I'm going to solder these two wires to this quick connect and then I can easily connect it to my car. I'm just soldering these wires to the switch, add a little bit of solder to this side. So now with my switch soldered, I need to mount it onto my center console. I've already marked off the spot where I need to drill it. With the hole drilled, I can then proceed to install my switch and then install this nut onto the switch. Next, I'm going to plug in the switch on the console. Finally, I'm going to install the plate that goes around the shifter. Next, I'm going to tighten up the horn bolts here. Make sure they're nice and snug. Tighten up this horn here. And then I'm also going to tighten down the compressor bolt. Okay, so I've got my wiring all tidied up with zip ties. I can go ahead and put my headlights and grill back on. The final step is to install a fuse. I'm using a 30 amp fuse so that we can make the horn circuit now live. Next, I'm going to install the grill. We're all done. See how she sounds. Here's what the horn sounds like directly in front of the car. Kind of sounds like a bicycle horn or a circus or something. Now the pitch of the horn could probably be controlled by the trumpets you put on. The longer trumpet is for the low pitch and the shorter trumpet is for the high pitch. So if you extend these trumpets longer, you should be able to get a lower, deeper tone. Here's what the horn sounds like when driving along. Here's what the horn sounds like when you're driving by. Finally, as a comparison, the stock horn versus the air horn. <laughs> 